In the vast, sun-baked expanse of the South African veldt, where the horizon stretches endlessly and the skies are a canvas of stars at night, there lies a forgotten farmhouse, its history etched into the dry, cracked earth. The locals, whose families have tilled the land for generations, speak in hushed tones of the events that transpired there, events so chilling that they have been etched into local law. The story begins with a young couple, M.I.A. and Liam, who, seeking to escape the hustle of Johannesburg, stumbled upon the old farmhouse. It was nestled in a secluded valley, surrounded by ancient acacia trees, their silhouettes a stark contrast against the twilight sky. The couple, enamored by the rustic charm and isolation, decided to make it their home, unaware of the shadows that clung to the aged walls. Shortly after moving in, strange occurrences began to unfold. Objects would move on their own, the sound of footsteps echoed through empty halls, and the scent of wildflowers filled the rooms at night, despite none growing nearby. MIA, a photographer, captured images of the landscape and the house, only to find unexplainable figures and faces in the photographs, their expressions twisted in silent screams and anguished whispers. Liam, a writer, found inspiration in the eerie atmosphere, his pen flying across the pages, crafting tales of horror and mystery. However, as days bled into nights, his stories began to mirror the disturbing events unfolding around them, his characters speaking of dark histories and cursed legacies tied to the land on which the farmhouse stood. One evening, as a storm brewed on the horizon, bringing with it an oppressive atmosphere that seemed to suffocate the valley, the couple discovered a hidden room beneath the floorboards of the cellar. Inside, remnants of ancient rituals and faded murals depicting scenes of a forgotten past hinted at a truth too dreadful to comprehend. The murals told of a spirit, bound to the farmhouse, a guardian of a sacred site long before the land was farmed, before the settlers arrived. This spirit, once a protector of the land, had been twisted by betrayal and bloodshed, its essence corrupted, its purpose forgotten, replaced by a desire for vengeance against those who dared to trespass upon its sacred ground. As the storm reached its crescendo, with lightning tearing the sky and thunder shaking the earth, the couple felt the veil between the worlds thin, the spirit's presence growing stronger, its anger palpable. M.I.A. and Liam, caught in the web of the house's dark history, found themselves facing the wrath of a being that transcended time, its sorrow and rage a storm of supernatural fury. With the boundaries of reality blurred, the couple had to unravel the mystery of the spirit and the farmhouse, to seek redemption for the wrongs of the past, or risk being consumed by the vengeful entity that stalked the shadows of their home. As the night deepened, the true horror of their situation became clear, the farmhouse a nexus of a historical and supernatural storm that they had unwittingly awakened. In the heart of the tempest, with the ancient spirit awakened, M.I.A. and Liam faced the daunting task of piecing together the history of the farmhouse and the land it stood upon. The storm outside mirrored the chaos within, as the past bled into the present, revealing the spirit's origins through haunting visions and spectral whispers. The couple discovered that the farmhouse was built upon a site sacred to a local tribe, a place of spiritual significance, where the veil between the natural and supernatural was thin. The murals in the hidden room depicted a tale of betrayal, the land was seized by colonial settlers, the sacred site desecrated, leading to a curse that bound the spirit to the farmhouse, its rage fueled by centuries of unavenged transgressions. As M.I.A. and Liam delved deeper into the mystery, they uncovered diaries and letters from previous inhabitants, each account adding layers to the tragic narrative. These documents spoke of unexplained disappearances, of madness that consumed those who lived there, and of a pervasive sorrow that filled the air like a dense fog. Determined to right the wrongs and free the spirit from its torment, the couple sought the help of a local historian and a descendant of the tribal shamans who once tended the land. They learned of a ritual that could appease the spirit, a ceremony that required objects of significance to the farmhouse's history and the sacred site. Gathering these objects during the storm's fury became a perilous endeavor. Each item was imbued with the energy of the past, their recovery causing ripples through the fabric of the haunted farmhouse. 
The spirit, aware of their intentions, manifested more forcefully, its apparition a spectral may language of anger and despair, challenging their every move. MIA, through her photographs, captured glimpses of the spirit's true form, a tortured soul bound in chains of its own making, its features a mask of sorrow and malice. Liam, in his writings, found himself compelled to pen apologies and elegies, as if guided by the unseen hand of the spirit, his words a catharsis for the pain etched into the very walls of the farmhouse. As they prepared for the ritual, the stall outside reached its zenith, the ancient trees bending under the wind's howl, the sky a canvas of furious energy. Inside, the air grew thick with anticipation, the past and present colliding in a crescendo of supernatural power. The ritual, performed in the eye of the storm, both within the hidden room and the tempest outside, became a conduit for the spirit's story to be acknowledged, its pain honored and its chains broken. The couple, along with their allies, chanted, offered, and pleaded, their voices merging with the wails of the wind and the cries of the spirit. The farmhouse, caught in the ritual's epic enter, groaned and shuddered, as if reliving its centuries of sorrow and conflict. The spirit's presence engulfed the room, its essence palpable, a vortex of light and shadow, history and memory swirling in the air. MIA and Liam, standing firm in the face of the supernatural maelstrom, felt the spirit's anguish, its centuries of imprisonment, and its yearning for release. The ritual's climax approached, the fate of the spirit, the farmhouse, and perhaps their own souls hanging in the balance, the night alive with the echoes of the past, whispering secrets long buried, waiting for the dawn to reveal the truth of the alleged horrors of the South African farmhouse. As the ritual reached its peak, the hidden room where MIA, Liam, and their allies stood became the heart of a vortex, a bridge between times and realms. The spirit's energy manifested as a storm within the storm, its form fluctuating between the ethereal and the terrifyingly tangible. The walls of the farmhouse vibrated with the echoes of its centuries-old pain, the murals glowing with an otherworldly light, narrating the spirit's sorrowful tale. The air was thick with the power of the ancient chants, the sacred objects arranged in a precise pattern on the floor pulsating with energy. These artifacts, linked to the spirit and the land's history, acted as keys to unlock the chains that bound the entity to the farmhouse. The spirit, drawn to the ritual's promise of release, swirled around the participants, its form a whirlwind of shadows and light, anger and despair. Outside, the natural storm raged in tandem with the spiritual turmoil inside, lightning striking the ground in rhythmic concordance with the ritual's crescendo, as if the very heavens were lending their energy to the chorus. The wind howled, a mournful chorus that seemed to carry the voices of those who had suffered on the land, their cries merging with the incantations to amplify the ceremony's potency. MIA, holding the pendant, which now throbbed with a heartbeat-like rhythm, stepped forward as the conduit for the ritual, her voice steady as she recited the ancient words. Liam, by her side, wrote the spirit's story, his pen moving furiously, capturing every nuance of the entity's existence, giving voice to its silent agony. The convergence of actions, the unity of purpose among the living and the dead, began to weave a tapestry of healing and redemption. The spirit's form, once a chaotic mass of darkness, started to coalesce into a more defined shape, the visage of the person it once was, revealing the human behind the haunting. With each chant, each word penned, and each strike of lightning, the chains of energy that tethered the spirit to the farmhouse and the land began to dissolve, disintegrating into motes of light that floated upwards, joining the storm above. The spirit's rage turned to relief, its despair to hope, as the ritual guided it towards release. As the final words of the ritual were spoken, and the last line of the story was written, a profound silence fell over the farmhouse. The storm outside abated as suddenly as it had come, the wind dying down, the lightning ceasing, leaving only the gentle patter of rain and the soft glow of dawn on the horizon. The spirit, now freed from its earthly bonds, looked upon MIA, Liam, and the others, its eyes conveying gratitude and sorrow, a silent farewell before it dissipated into the light of the breaking day, its essence returning to the land from which it had sprung, its memory honored and its pain laid to rest. 
The farmhouse, released from the haunting, stood silent and peaceful, its walls no longer prisons of the past but simply structures of wood and stone. Emma A and Liam, their roles as guardians fulfilled, stepped out into the dawn of a new day, the weight of the night's events a shared burden they would carry forward. Their experience at the farmhouse, a nexus of historical and supernatural forces, became a chapter in their lives, a tale of courage and compassion, of understanding and liberation. The land around the farmhouse, once a silent witness to centuries of unspoken history, now whispered with the promise of new beginnings, the spirits of the past finally at peace. The story of the alleged horrors of the South African farmhouse ended not with lingering fear, but with resolution and renewal, a testament to the power of confronting and healing the wounds of history, a narrative etched in the annals of the town's lore, ready to be continued by those who come after, their eyes open to the truths hidden in the shadows. As MIA and Liam watched the sunrise over the now peaceful farmhouse, their experience from the night before settled into their bones, a story of terror turned to triumph. The land, once scarred by hidden pain and dark history, now seemed to breathe a sigh of relief, its ancient wounds finally beginning to heal. But as the couple soon discovered, the ritual had unforeseen consequences. The release of the spirit and the sealing of the rift had shifted something fundamental in the fabric of the area. The farmhouse, while no longer a prison for the tormented spirit, had become a beacon, a light in the darkness that attracted other, lesser spirits and entities. These were the lost and wandering souls, drawn to the site as a place of power and potential passage. The weeks that followed were filled with new challenges. MIA and Liam found themselves in the role of guardians, not just of the farmhouse but of the surrounding lands. Their home became a sanctuary and a crossroads for the spectral entities that roamed the veldt, each seeking solace, resolution, or merely a path to the next part of their journey. Their life became a balance between the living and the dead, negotiating the complexities of their coexistence. Mia's photographs began to capture more than just the landscape, they became windows to the unseen world, revealing the stories of the entities that now inhabited their space. Liam's writings, too, evolved, becoming chronicles of their encounters and interactions with the spirits, a record of the folklore that was unfolding in real time around them. But with these new roles came new dangers. The farmhouse, with its storied past and recent events, drew not only benign spirits but also darker entities and curious individuals with less than noble intentions. Treasure hunters, thrill seekers, and those fascinated by the occult began to trespass on their land, disturbing the delicate balance MIA and Liam had worked so hard to establish. To protect their home and the spirits that had come to rely on them, MIA and Liam had to strengthen the farmhouse's defenses, both physical and supernatural. They enlisted the help of local shamans and historians, weaving together ancient practices and modern technology to create a sanctuary that was safe for both the living and the dead. Their efforts, however, did not go unnoticed. The increased activity at the farmhouse began to attract attention from beyond the local community. Paranormal investigators, media outlets, and even academic researchers became interested in the farmhouse's history and the couple's experiences. With the outside world closing in, MIA and Liam found themselves at a crossroads. They could maintain their privacy and protect the sanctity of their home and its spiritual inhabitants, risking isolation and misunderstanding, or they could open their doors and share their experiences, offering a unique insight into the coexistence of the living and the spectral. As they pondered their future, the farmhouse, once a place of horror and now a home of mystery and guardianship, stood as a testament to their journey. The sun set once more over the veldt, Casting long shadows across the land that held so many stories, the narrative of the farmhouse and its guardians ready to enter a new chapter, their lives a continuing saga of the thin line between the natural and the supernatural. As MIA and Liam grappled with the decision of whether to share their extraordinary experiences with the world, the farmhouse continued to be a nexus of supernatural activity. The spirits, benign and malevolent, were drawn to the site, each with their own stories and unresolved business, 
creating a complex tapestry of ethereal interactions that needed constant vigilance and management. The couple's days were consumed with navigating this new reality, learning to communicate with the entities and helping them find peace or passage to the next realm. The once quiet farmhouse buzzed with unseen energy, its rooms and lands a stage for the dramas of the spirit world. Meanwhile, the attention from the outside world grew more intense. A particularly persistent paranormal investigator, intrigued by rumors and half-told tales of the farmhouse's history and recent events, sought to uncover the truth. This investigator, armed with technology and a team of experts, edged closer to penetrating the veil of secrecy MIA and Liam had maintained around their home. One night, under the cover of darkness, the team made their move, setting up equipment around the farmhouse, aiming to capture undeniable proof of the supernatural phenomena. The disturbance this caused in the spiritual realm was immediate and chaotic. The once harmonious coexistence of the spirits was disrupted, leading to a night of turmoil and unrest, both in the physical and spectral worlds. MIA and Liam, alerted by the unrest of their spectral wards, confronted the intruders, demanding they cease their invasive actions. The standoff was tense, with the couple trying to protect the delicate balance they had nurtured while the investigators pushed for a breakthrough in their paranormal research. In the midst of this confrontation, a powerful, unseen force swept through the farmhouse, a whirlwind of spectral energy unleashed by the disturbance. Shadows took form, objects moved of their own accord, and the air crackled with ethereal voices. The farmhouse, a crucible of spiritual power, reacted to the invasion with a display of supernatural strength that was impossible to deny or ignore. The investigators, faced with the roar and uncontrolled manifestations of the haunted farmhouse, realized the depth of their intrusion and the potential consequences of their actions. The team, led by the now deeply shaken investigator, retreated, their equipment capturing only a fraction of the night's chaos, leaving behind a shaken MIA and Liam, who were forced to calm the storm of spiritual unrest. The event marked a turning point for the couple. They realized that their role as guardians of the farmhouse and its ethereal inhabitants was not just a private affair, but a responsibility to the broader natural and supernatural communities. The balance they had worked so hard to achieve was fragile and could be easily tipped by ignorance or curiosity. MIA and Liam, with renewed purpose, sought to establish a more formalized boundary around their home, one that would protect both the living and the dead. They engaged with local leaders, spiritual advisors, and the few trusted individuals who were aware of the farmhouse's true nature to create a plan that would safeguard the site while allowing them to live in relative peace. Their efforts resulted in the formation of a sanctuary, a protected space where the spiritual and natural worlds could coexist in harmony, and where the stories of the past and present could be preserved and respected. The farmhouse, once a place of horror, then a home of unexpected guardianship became a symbol of coexistence and understanding, a beacon in the ongoing dance between the light and shadow. MIA and Liam's story, interwoven with the history of the farmhouse and the spirits it harbored, continued to evolve, a narrative of fear, courage, and compassion played out on the border between the known and the unknown, their journey a testament to the enduring power of respect and balance in the face of the mysteries of the universe. With the establishment of the sanctuary, MIA and Liam's farmhouse became a place where the boundaries between the living and the dead were acknowledged and respected. The sanctuary, under their stewardship, grew in reputation as a haven for spirits seeking respite and for the living seeking understanding of the ethereal world. The couple, once isolated in their struggles, now found themselves at the center of a community bound by the shared recognition of the unseen world's complexities. The sanctuary's influence extended beyond the immediate locale, attracting the attention of scholars, spiritualists, and those touched by the supernatural from across the globe. MIA and Liam hosted gatherings where knowledge was exchanged and stories were shared, weaving the individual experiences into a larger tapestry that depicted the intricate relationship between the natural and supernatural realms. 
However, the increased activity and the sanctuary's growing energy did not go unnoticed by darker forces. The remnants of the cult that had once sought to harness the power of the darkness for their own ends had been scattered but not entirely vanquished. These remnants, lurking in the shadows, saw the sanctuary not as a place of balance and healing but as a threat to their own twisted desires. Under the cover of night, these malign elements conspired to undermine the sanctuary, to breach its defenses and tap into the potent spiritual energy it housed. They employed forbidden rituals and dark enchantments, aiming to disrupt the sanctuary's harmony and reawaken the rifts that MIA and Liam had fought so hard to seal. The couple, aware of the brewing storm on their horizon, prepared to defend their home and the spirits under their care. They fortified the sanctuary's boundaries with both ancient wards and modern technology, creating a barrier that blended the old and the new, the physical and the spiritual. As tensions rose, the sanctuary became a battleground once more, not just for the living but for the spirits who had come to call it home. These spirits, loyal to the sanctuary and its guardians, stood alongside MIA and Liam, ready to protect the peace and balance that had been so hard won. One moonless night, the forces of the cult launched their assault, a wave of darkness that crashed against the sanctuary's defenses. The clash was titanic, a maelstrom of light and shadow, as spells and wills collided. The air was charged with power, the ground shook with the impact of the conflict, and the sky was alight with the energy of the battle. MIA and Liam, at the heart of the storm, channeled the strength of the sanctuary, the land, and its spirit allies into a focused beacon of light, pushing back against the tide of darkness. The battle raged through the night, a test of endurance and faith, as each side sought to overpower the other. In the midst of this chaos, the sanctuary's true strength was revealed. It was not just the physical place or the spells that protected it but the collective hope, belief, and love of all who had found solace within its bands. This combined force, a manifestation of the sanctuary's purpose, surged through the night, a wave of cleansing energy that sought to extinguish the darkness and heal the scars of conflict. As dawn approached, the outcome of the battle hung in the balance, the sanctuary a beacon in the night, standing defiant against the encroaching shadows, its legacy and future intertwined with the fate of its guardians, MIA and Liam, whose courage and determination had ignited a light that the darkness could not quench. As the first light of dawn crept across the horizon, the battle for the sanctuary reached its climax. MIA and Liam, their energies nearly spent, stood defiant against the remnants of the cult, which now seemed diminished, their dark forces waning under the relentless assault of light and unity from the sanctuary and its defenders. The sanctuary, pulsating with the collective strength and will of the myriad souls it sheltered, both living and dead, became the epicenter of a final push against the invasive darkness. The ground itself seemed to rise in defiance, the ancient trees bending to shield the land, and the very air shimmering with protective energy. In the heart of the conflict, a pivotal moment unfolded as MIA, channeling the essence of the sanctuary's power, confronted the cult's leader. This figure, shrouded in shadows, emanated malice and desperation, a stark contrast to Mir's radiant determination. Words of confrontation were exchanged, not just through spoken language but through the clash of their auras, a battle of ideals and wills where the stakes were the very soul of the sanctuary. Liam, meanwhile, supported by the spirit inhabitants and the sanctuary's natural allies, orchestrated a symphony of resistance, countering the cult's dark rituals with harmonies of light and life, weaving spells of protection and healing that mended the rifts the cult sought to exploit. The confrontation escalated as the cult leader, sensing defeat, unleashed a desperate gambit, tapping into forbidden energies that threatened to tear apart the very fabric of the realm. This force, chaotic and consuming, spiraled out of control, becoming a vortex of destruction that threatened to engulf everything in its path. In response, the sanctuary itself seemed to awaken fully to the danger, its history, pain, and triumph coalescing into a tangible presence. This entity, born of the land's memory and the guardianship of MIA and Liam, stood as a monumental force against the darkness. 
With the support of this entity, MIA directed the surge of sanctuary power towards the Vortex, aiming to neutralize the threat in a decisive act of sacrificial defiance. The clash was monumental, a spectacle of light and dark, as the energies collided in a blinding explosion that illuminated the surrounding belt and silenced the storm. When the light dimmed and the echoes of the clash faded, the sanctuary stood unbroken, the threat dissipated, its landscape serene yet forever changed by the night's events. The aftermath was a time of healing and reflection. The cult's remnants, stripped of their power and leader, were scattered, their plans thwarted and their threat neutralized. The sanctuary, strengthened by the trial, became a beacon of hope and a testament to the enduring power of light over darkness. MIA and Liam, their bond deepened and their roles as guardians affirmed, looked upon the new dawn with a sense of solemn pride. They had protected their home and its inhabitants, both seen and unseen, and had ensured the sanctuary's legacy as a place of peace and convergence between worlds. The story of the sanctuary, MIA, and Liam continued to unfold, a narrative rich with the lore of the past and the promise of the future. The farmhouse, once a simple structure, now stood as a monument to their journey, a guardian against the darkness, and a haven for those who traveled between the light and shadow. In the calm that followed the storm, the sanctuary began to truly flourish. The battle had left its mark, scarring the land, but also imbuing it with a newfound strength. The sanctuary, now recognized as a bastion against the darkness, attracted beings of light and wisdom from beyond the earthly realm, eager to lend their power to the Guardian's cause and fortify the barriers between worlds. MIA and Liam, acknowledged as the heart of the sanctuary, found themselves not just as defenders but as leaders in a growing community of both the living and the spectral. They held councils with the spirits, discussing the safety and balance of the sanctuary, and with humans, planning the future and ensuring the legacy of their protection. But peace was always a fragile state. Whispers of a darker force, one that lurked in the depths of the land, began to surface. Unlike the cult's overt aggression, this new threat was subtler, a creeping darkness that seeped into dreams and whispered doubts and fears into the minds of the sanctuary's inhabitants. This force, ancient and malevolent, had watched the sanctuary's rise and the defeat of the cult with interest. It sought not to destroy the sanctuary but to corrupt it from within, turning its strength and light into weapons of shadow. This entity, known in hushed tones as the Dream Weaver, had the power to warp reality, to turn nightmares into existence and to feed on the resulting terror. MIA, sensitive to the shifts in the spiritual landscape, began to experience vivid dreams, visions of the sanctuary twisted into a nightmarish realm, its inhabitants trapped in a perpetual cycle of fear and despair. These dreams, she realized, were not mere figments of her imagination but messages and threats from the dream weaver. Liam, too, felt the encroaching darkness, his writing taking on a darker edge, stories flowing from his pen that spoke of alternate, horrifying realities where the sanctuary was a place of torment rather than protection. Recognizing the danger, they sought to understand the nature of the dream weaver and find a way to counter its insidious influence. Their research led them to ancient lore about beings that existed between the fabric of dreams and reality, entities that could manipulate the subconscious and twist the waking world. The Dreamweaver, one of these beings, had been bound centuries ago, its power limited to the realm of dreams. However, the disturbances in the supernatural balance caused by the previous conflicts had weakened its bonds, allowing it to reach out into the world once more. The couple, along with their allies both human and spirit, prepared for a different kind of battle, one fought in the realm of dreams and the subconscious. They fortified their minds and the sanctuary, creating wards and enchantments that protected the sleep of the inhabitants, and prepared to confront the dream weaver in its domain. As the full moon rose, casting a silvery glow over the sanctuary, the stage was set for a confrontation unlike any before. MIA and Liam, connected by their shared destiny and the power of the sanctuary, entered the dream realm together, guided by the spirits that knew the pathways through the shifting landscape of the subconscious. 
In this realm, they faced not only the Dreamweaver, but also the fears and doubts it conjured from the depths of their own minds, each illusion a battle, each shadow a test of their resolve and unity. The dream world was a maze of memories and fears, each turn revealing deeper layers of their psyche and the hidden strength they possessed. The confrontation with the Dreamweaver was a tempest of mind and spirit, a battle of wills where the landscape itself was a reflection of their inner turmoil and strength. The entity, a shifting mass of darkness and stolen faces, taunted and tested them, seeking to erode their determination and turn their own fears against them. As the night deepened, the battle in the dream realm reached its zenith, the outcome uncertain, the sanctuary's fate intertwined with the struggle of its guardians against the darkness that sought to turn their sanctuary of light into a realm of shadows. Within the surreal expanse of the dream realm, M.I.A. and Liam, hand in hand, navigated the labyrinthine corridors of their subconscious, confronting the Dreamweaver's manipulations. The entity, a master of illusion and fear, wove scenarios designed to trap them in their own nightmares, isolating them from each other and their shared strength. The dream battles were intense, with the Dreamweaver constantly shifting the environment, forcing them to face their darkest fears and unresolved pains. The landscape around them ebbed and flowed, a manifestation of their inner worlds, revealing hidden depths of their psyches, testing their resolve and the bonds that tied them to each other and to the sanctuary. MIA, with her strong intuitive sense, guided them through the deceptive terrains, her connection to the sanctuary acting as a beacon of light in the shifting darkness. Liam, with his creative insight, deciphered the Dreamweaver's riddles and illusions, unmasking the fears as fabrications, weakening the entity's hold on the dream realm. Together, they began to turn the tide against the Dreamweaver, reclaiming control of the dreamscape their love and unity a shield against the darkness. However, the Dreamweaver, in a bid to maintain its dominion, unveiled its ultimate weapon, a vision of the Sanctuary's destruction, a future where their efforts were for naught, and the darkness prevailed. Faced with this harrowing prophecy, M.I.A. and Liam had to muster all their courage and faith. They challenged the vision, questioning its authenticity and defying the despair it sought to instill. Through their defiance, they discovered the Dreamweaver's weakness, its reliance on the belief in its illusions. Drawing on the collective strength of their allies, both in the waking world and the spiritual plane, they mounted a final assault on the Dreamweaver's core, a nexus of darkness shrouded in the deepest fears and nightmares. The battle was a crucible, testing not just their strength, but the very essence of their beliefs and the power of hope against despair. As the struggle reached its climax, the dream realm quaked under the strain of the conflict, the boundaries between nightmare and reality blurring, threatening to spill over into the waking world. The sanctuary, linked to its guardian's fate, shimmered in the moonlight, its barriers pulsating in sync with the battle in the dreamscape. M.I.A. and Liam, united in purpose and heart, confronted the Dreamweaver in the heart of its domain, their love and determination shining like a beacon against the encroaching darkness. The confrontation was a tempest of energy, a clash of light and shadow, where every fear confronted and every illusion dispelled added to their strength, diminishing the Dreamweaver's power. In the real world, the Sanctuary's inhabitants, both living and spectral, stood vigil, their collective will supporting the Guardians, their hopes and prayers weaving through the veil between worlds, bolstering the fight against the Dreamweaver. The outcome of this ethereal battle was more than the fate of two Guardians, it was a fight for the soul of the Sanctuary, a stand against the forces that sought to turn dreams into nightmares and light into darkness. The saga of M.I.A., Liam, and the Sanctuary unfolded in a realm beyond the tangible, a tale of courage, love, and the enduring light that can dispel even the deepest shadows of the night. Continue from the previous story and make it longer like the plot of a horror script in a film and don't make an ending or conclusion. So that this story can be continued in the next process. In the climactic moments before dawn, the battle within the dream realm intensified, with M.I.A. and Liam confronting the Dreamweaver in a showdown that transcended the physical boundaries of the sanctuary. The Dreamweaver, cornered and faltering under the relentless assault of light and unity, unleashed its final, 
desperate gambit, morphing the dreamscape into a twisted reflection of the sanctuary's past horrors and potential future devastations. Surrounded by visions of the sanctuary's destruction and the triumph of darkness, M.I.A. and Liam stood resolute, their bond unbroken, their resolve unyielding. They realized that to defeat the Dreamweaver, they must not only counter its attacks but also heal the wounds it exploited, the fears, the losses, and the traumas embedded in the fabric of the Sanctuary and themselves. Drawing on the collective strength and history of the Sanctuary, M.I.A. channeled the spirit's energy, weaving it into a tapestry of light that mended the fractured dreamscape. Liam, through his words, rewrote the narrative of despair into one of hope and resilience, his stories acting as spells that repaired the torn veil between reality and dream. Together, they transformed the Dreamweaver's realm of nightmares into a sanctuary of dreams, a place where every fear confronted became a pillar of strength, and each shadow dispelled added to their light. The dream realm, once a battlefield, began to stabilize, reflecting the sanctuary's true nature, a haven of peace and balance. The Dreamweaver, its power waning and domain crumbling, faced M.I.A. and Liam in a final, desperate confrontation. It lashed out with shadows that were quickly dissipated by the couple's radiant presence, their love and unity shining like a beacon in the darkened realm. In the real world, as the first light of dawn touched their horizon, the sanctuary and its inhabitants held their breath, their fates intertwined with the outcome of the battle. The spirits of the sanctuary, along with the living guardians and allies, lent their energy to bolster M.I.A. and Liam, creating a surge of power that flowed into the dream realm. With a crescendo of light and a chorus of unified spirits, M.I.A. and Liam faced the dream weaver, their combined strength a testament to the enduring power of hope and guardianship. The final blow was not one of destruction but of liberation, aimed at freeing the dream weaver from its own cycle of darkness and despair. As the entity's form dissipated, its essence purified by the light of the sanctuary, the dream realm calmed, the night's terrors fading like mist under the morning sun. The rifts between the worlds healed, the boundaries reaffirmed, and the sanctuary, both in dream and reality, was restored to a state of peaceful equilibrium. M.I.A. and Liam, their trial within the dream realm concluded, awoke to a new day, their spirits and the sanctuary rejuvenated by the victory over the Dreamweaver. The battle had ended, but their roles as guardians continued, the experience a profound chapter in their ongoing saga of maintaining the balance between light and shadow. The sanctuary, once a place of hidden horrors and then a battleground of spectral forces, now stood as a testament to the triumph over darkness, a beacon for those who walk the line between the seen and unseen worlds. The story of M.I.A., Liam, and the Sanctuary, rich with the lore of the past and the promise of the future, continued to unfold, a narrative of courage and compassion in the face of the eternal dance of light and darkness. As the Sanctuary basked in the tranquility of the dawn, M.I.A. and Liam, though weary from their ordeal, felt a profound connection to the land and the spirits that dwelled within it. Their victory over the Dreamweaver had not only saved their home but also deepened their understanding of the intricate balance between the physical and spiritual realms. However, the peace was not to remain unchallenged. The energy released during the confrontation with the Dreamweaver rippled through the dimensions, attracting the attention of other, more ancient and powerful entities. These beings, curious about the Sanctuary's newfound strength and the guardians who had defended it, began to turn their gaze towards the small, yet significant, piece of the world. M.I.A. and Liam started noticing signs of these new watchers. The wildlife around the Sanctuary behaved unusually, with nocturnal animals seen in broad daylight and birds circling the area relentlessly. The air thronged with a power that was not malevolent, but overwhelmingly potent, charged with the essence of primordial forces that had stirred from their slumber. In the weeks that followed, the couple embarked on a quest to understand these new developments. They consulted with ancient texts, sought wisdom from the spirits, and even delved into the memories of the land itself, using Mia's photography and Liam's writing as mediums to unlock the past secrets. 
Their investigation revealed that the sanctuary was built upon a nexus of ley lines, channels of the Earth's energy that converged at points of significant power. The Dreamweaver's attempts to manipulate these energies had inadvertently awakened these ley lines, drawing the attention of the ancient entities, guardians of the Earth's primal forces. These guardians, neither benevolent nor malevolent, were beings of nature's raw essence, embodying the elements and the untamed aspects of the world. Their interest in the sanctuary was not a threat but a test, a challenge to MIA and Liam's right to be the land's custodians. MIA and Liam prepare to meet these entities, to show their respect and to prove their commitment to maintaining the balance of the sanctuary. They performed rituals of offering and respect, aligning the sanctuary's energies with the natural world and reinforcing the bonds between them and the land. As the equinox approached, a time when the veil between worlds is thin and the Earth's energies are in flux, the ancient guardians made their presence known. They appeared in forms both wondrous and terrifying, as manifestations of earth, air, fire, and water, each challenging the couple in different ways. MIA and Liam faced these challenges with a mixture of courage, wisdom, and humility, each trial a lesson in the power and responsibilities that came with their roles as guardians. They negotiated with the wind, danced with the flames, nurtured the soil, and flowed with the waters, each element a test of their understanding and respect for the natural world. The equinox night arrived, the sanctuary a focal point of natural and spiritual power. MIA and Liam, standing together, awaited the final judgment of the ancient guardians, the air alive with anticipation and the raw energy of the earth. The encounter that night was a pivotal moment in the saga of the sanctuary, a convergence of past, present, and future where the legacy of M.I.A. and Liam as guardians was to be affirmed or denied, their story intertwined with the primal forces of the world, continuing the eternal dance of balance between the light and shadow, the seen and unseen, the mortal and the eternal. As the equinox night reached its zenith, the sanctuary pulsed with the primordial energy, the ancient guardians assessing M.I.A. and Liam's stewardship. The air vibrated with power, the earth beneath their feet thrummed with life, and the very essence of the sanctuary awaited the verdict of these elemental forces. MIA and Liam stood hand in hand, their resolve as strong as the bond between them, facing the manifestations of the ancient guardians. They had passed the trials, proving their respect and understanding of the natural world, their actions speaking of their commitment to the balance between all realms. The guardians, ancient and enigmatic, conveyed their judgment not in words but through the very fabric of the sanctuary. The wind whispered approval, the flames danced with joy, the earth bloomed under their feet, and the waters flowed in harmonious rhythms around them. The couple had succeeded in their test, their right to guard the sanctuary affirmed by the primal forces of nature. With the guardian's blessing, MIA and Liam felt a deepening of their connection to the sanctuary, their roles as its protectors now intertwined with the ley lines and energies of the land. The sanctuary, a beacon of balance and harmony, flourished under their care, a place where the veil between worlds was respected and protected. The ancient guardians, their interest in the sanctuary satisfied, receded back into the fabric of the world, their presence a lingering warmth in the air, a reminder of the eternal cycle of nature and the interconnectedness of all life. In the aftermath, the sanctuary became a legend, a place of mystique and wonder where the boundary between the natural and the supernatural was a bridge rather than a barrier. MIA and Liam, recognized as the true guardians of this sacred place, continued their stewardship, their lives a testament to their journey through fear and darkness into a light of understanding and harmony. The tale of the sanctuary and its guardians, MIA and Liam, ended not with the closure of a chapter but with the promise of ongoing stories, of nights filled with the soft glow of starlight and days warmed by the sun. Their saga, enriched by battles fought and wisdom gained, stood as a beacon for those who walk the shadowed path, seeking the light of truth and the harmony of existence. And so, the sanctuary, nestled in the embrace of the ancient land, 
remained a haven of peace and a sentinel against the darkness, its legacy carried forward by those who understood the delicate dance of light and shadow, the intricate balance of the seen and unseen, the eternal and the ephemeral, in the heart of the untamed felt.